so in, in the rest of this um, assignment, or the rest of these notes, and even in our assignments, it's not going to be two graphs on top of one another, okay? Uh, but that's really all we did yesterday is we took one graph, one inequality, graphed it. And the way I approach it then is that even though it's, you know, we had yesterday in class, we graphed um, what, that blue one first. And then when I graph the yellow one, what I do in my mind is I just ignore the blue one. It's not even there. And I just do the whole process over again with the yellow one uh, and then see where their overlap is. We're going to jump to this one here, and we are going to just work on that top equation. So I'm going to so cross out the bottom one. Don't even worry about it. All right, so remember, um, there's two types of lines that we're going to make. We're going to make a dotted line or a solid line, okay? You guys remember if it's dotted or solid, what is the what is the uh, inequality for dotted? Okay, and then solid would be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, right? The way I remember that is if I was going to make a dotted line, that is less ink or graphite on my pencil or whatever than when I was making a solid, right? That makes sense. Okay. So it takes more ink to make a solid line, and it takes more ink to make that symbol right there. Uh, and that just reminds me how I um, know which one to make. Some people have, uh, in the past have told me, well, they know that, well, if that's a line underneath the inequality for equality, um, they say, well, that's a line, so then I need to use a full solid line when I graph. So there's, however you can kind of connect to remember um, which one's which, uh, try to develop something that makes it easy for you. Uh, so what we do is we, we're going to graph this line uh, using the various techniques that we've talked about. Okay. So right now, it is in y equals mx plus b format, right? Now, I know it's an inequality, but when we graph things, regardless of it being an inequality at the onset, we still treat it like it's an equation. So I'm going to, if you remember y equals mx plus b, what does that number right there tell me? where you cross the y-axis, right? It's my y-intercept. Okay. What is my slope in this case, then? What's the other number up there? Two, right? So my slope is two. And remember, slope is rise over run. And right now, it's just a two. I can put that over one, right? Still have two. So up two and to the right one will be my rise over run. Okay, in previous videos we said, well, if I, if I go up two over one, and I want to do that again, I run out of room on my graph, right? If I go down two, left one, down two, left one, so that's a strategy maybe to get more points. Now, the one thing about uh, graphing inequalities like this is that we want to make sure we have a line that is long enough to pass through to pass through our entire graph. I don't know why that's doing that. There we go. So that is our line, y equals 2x plus 4. Now, it's a, the inequality was less than. So it's one of these, right? So that means I've got to use a dotted line. So I'm going to go back through and I'll make this dotted.
So that's our dotted line. Now, when it's less than, okay, or greater than, or less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, you have to do shading. You have to um, determine um, your infinite number of solutions. So we have less than, okay? Where should I shade? Should I shade up here? Because there's two sides of my dotted line, right? And basically what we're going to do is decide which side do I shade. Do I shade the blue or do we shade the yellow? Say that again. Okay, so less than is going to be below the dotted line. So which one would be below the dotted line? The yellow, okay? Now, what I, I told you yesterday, I, like I like to take myself and just drop that person into, oh, <laughs> drop them from the top onto the grass, and once they hit the line, then they are on top of the line, right? They are on the above. They are on the greater side of the line. Uh, so then I can shade opposite that if I need to. Um, another way, so that, those techniques, guys, those are, they, they don't always work, and I'll explain what I mean by that in, in a little bit with an example. The safest way to decide where to shade is to choose a point and plug it into your inequality, Okay. Now, if I'm going to substitute, what is a really nice number to substitute into anything? Zero, okay? So zero, zero is a great point to choose. So I'm going to choose zero, zero. I'm going to come back up to my original inequality, which said y is less than 2x plus 4. And I'll plug zero, zero in. So y is zero. 2x, so 2 times zero, that goes away, right? That goes to zero. And you're left with 4. So then I ask my, and I always get a statement, and I have to ask myself, is that true? Is zero less than four? Yes, it is. So the, what that tells me is then that's the side of the line where zero, zero was. That's the side of the line that you're going to color or shade. Okay? So zero, zero is on the bottom here. So we go through and we shade over here. And what we're really doing here is we're saying that every point that we choose out of the yellow, every single one of those points that we choose out of the yellow, maybe I choose something like uh, 3, 1. That's in the yellow, right? That point 3, 1 will give me a true statement out of this inequality again. So if I put y to be 1, less than 2 times 3, which is 6, right? Because x was 3. Add 4 to it, I get 1 is less than 10. Is that a true or false statement? That's true, right? 1 is less than 10? Okay. If I try a number like this one down here, negative 3, negative 4. Plug in negative 4. Plug in negative 3, so it would be negative 6 plus 4. Is negative 4 less than negative 2? That's true, right? Every one of these points in the yellow is going to satisfy the original inequality, and that's our way of displaying an infinite number of solutions. There's no way you could write, say, if we got infinite solutions, that you write down all of them as ordered pairs, right? That's impossible, okay? But we can create a picture that presents that list of um, infinite solutions. Does that make sense? If those give me all true statements, okay, then let's take a point that is on my dotted line. Let's take the point um, right there. Let's take uh, negative 2, 0. So x is negative 2, y is 0. If I plug that in to my inequality, y is less than 2x plus 4. So y is 0, less than, so 2 times negative 2 now. 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4, and then plus 4. What's negative 4 plus 4? 0, isn't it? Ask this question. Is 0 less than 0? No, that's false, right? 
Okay? And that's what the dotted line means to us. Every point on the dotted line is going to give us something back similar to zero is less than zero. It'll give me maybe back like three is less than three or five is less than five or negative two is less than negative two. It'll always give me back a number less than itself. And we know that's always false, right? Okay. And then any number that's up here or any ordered pair that's up here in the non-shaded region will give me a false statement in my inequality as well. Okay. But that will be like five is less than two. It'll be a will be different numbers, but this will be be false. Five is not less than two. That kind of makes sense on how one how to do it, but two what the information is telling us when we do it. Okay, we cool with that. All right, let's go to this next one. You guys take a moment, and we'll do the bottom one here. Do y is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. Graph that one on your own, uh, and then we'll reconvene and see um, our accuracy with it. What's your y-intercept on this one? 4? And from there, you are going to go where? Down 1. Right one. Because neg so negative one over one. <laughs> so that's so that's rise over run, right? Think about this. If I go if you go down one and then left one, that would be a negative one for down and a negative one for left, what's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. So Huh? <laughs> um so go back up to so so do this. Change change your equation to a plus x there, and then your image will be the same as which would be which which would be exactly what you would have, right? I know. But if you so so if you did so so this is this is y equals negative x plus four, right? This would be this red one would be x plus four. Okay, so if yours is the red one, just change this, just change the equation right there to positive x. Why is this black one down one, right one? Because this, because, because this has negative one over one, right? Like when you have a negative number, if I have like negative three, I can put that over one, right? What is that one? Is that positive or negative? It's positive. I I I understand that, but do you do you understand why it's not though? Because if it because there's a one out here, so it's just like it's, it's just like this negative three one, but so it's down one, right one. So is that a solid line or a dotted line? Solid. I we I didn't want to do the first one. So we should have a solid line. Okay, solid line. Okay, now it says y is less than or equal to. So it's solid because we've got that equality part. Um now less than or equal to, where am I gonna shade? Do I shade up here? Where do I shade over here? Which color? Yellow or blue? Why would you choose blue? Okay, so so less than less than means below something, right? Less than means below something, correct? Okay, so if I have fifty dollars and you have less than that, you have less than fifty dollars, correct? So if you're less than this so this is saying your y values are less than this line. So if I put a person on here and drop them in, they're gonna land right there, correct? They're gonna land on the top of the line. So where would be less than? Be below it, right? 
Okay. So the if, if you had a plus, it would be you'd be shading where my stuff is right now, where my cursor is. Does that make sense? So you would shade you would shade all of this stuff if you had a plus four or plus X. So. So here, here's, here's algebraically, guys. So the best way of doing this is dropping this person is not the best way, okay? Because that can be confusing sometimes. The best way is to choose a point. What's the best point to choose? Zero, zero. Choose zero, zero, and plug it into your inequality. So y is less than or equal to negative x plus 4. If I plug zero, zero in, I get that. And I ask the question, is 0 less than or equal to 4? The answer is yes to that, right? That's a true statement, right? So if it's true, you shade on the side of the line that that point you just used came from. Does everybody see that 0, 0 comes from the bottom of the line? And we're going to shade down there. Okay. Huh? Okay, so okay, so you talk about maybe never using this. So you're gonna schedule people at some point, right? This is actually a tool that we could use eventually to maximize our scheduling process. To maximize so if you're scheduling somebody at Texas Roadhouse, you Let's say at, um, give me a time of the day that there's not a lot of people there. 3.30 in the afternoon. Do you want to have um, like a fully staffed um, staff at 3.30 in the afternoon? No, because you're going to be paying people to stand around, correct? Okay. Do you want to, give me a busy time. 6 o'clock in the evening, right? Uh, do you want to have uh, a staff where you're missing three cooks, four waitresses, and a hostess? No, because you're going to have a lot of people that get angry at you, right? Because their food's going to be slow to come out. They're not going to be seated fast, right? If I, so if I'm a manager, I want to manage efficiently, right? I want to staff efficiently. This type of algebra, eventually, well, you got to learn a little bit more, but this is the, the foundation for doing that. Okay, it's called optimization, called feasible solutions. Okay. Do uh, you know, so we won World War II, right? Okay. How did we get people in tanks and horses and food and all that stuff that we needed to fight a war? How did we get all that stuff to Europe? How did, you get, how did we get a tank to Europe? We put it on a boat, right? Okay. Um, so what happens is when we take a boat and we just start putting a bunch of tanks on it, that's not really optimal because we could sink the boat. We could waste fuel uh, by doing that. But if we put maybe two tanks on a boat, maybe um, 30 soldiers on a boat, and maybe two airplanes, that might be more efficient in getting those supplies to Europe, okay? And then in another boat, maybe we've got all soldiers and maybe rations, and that is sent to Europe. What we found out, so back in World War II, we were being somewhat inefficient with uh, getting our supplies and our people to Europe uh, to fight the war, okay? And essentially, we were running out of resources, running out of money, running out of fuel, um, I forget who the guy was, but he had been studying, he had been studying and, and researching this type of stuff right here, okay, um, that allowed him, uh, he, he was in the, the military, allowed him to design a method for shipping, for, for basically putting the, um, the right resources together on these ships and sending them to be, to, to maximize our efficiency, uh, and that mathematics, which we're learning right now, was one of the most influential reasons why we won the war, okay? 
Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that this is useful for. Huh? What? <laughs> Maybe, but, I mean, you could be as, you could be the toughest, best, most ferocious fighting army, but if you don't have the resources getting to you in timely fashion in the amounts that you need, it doesn't matter how good of a fighter you are. <laughs> um, so that's called the, that um, the process that he went through. This guy went through. It's called linear programming, uh, which allowed uh, that efficiency to to develop. And their linear programming is a very, 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 very um, useful technique uh, in um, like manufacturing uh, and distributions. Um, Scheduling, managing, that kind of thing. Uh, and this is the, the foundation for it. Um, we like to maximize, when, if I'm a business person, I like to maximize profit, right? Profit's the money that comes in, um, removing my costs from, right? Okay, so revenue is all the money that comes in. If I take my revenue minus my costs, I get my profit. If I'm a business person, I want to maximize that, right? Okay, this stuff that we're doing right now allows us to eventually max, learn how I need to maximize things, okay? If we think about, think about uh, P&G. P&G makes what? Laundry soap, okay? So at least that's what they make here. Um, so let's say that we, uh, we, we're P&G and we're making laundry. So make Tide Pods, okay? Um, and I make so many Tide Pods that I can't sell them. So, so, because we've, yeah, we've made people stop eating them. So what? What 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 happens to P and G if if they make all these Tide Pods and they can't sell them? What do they have to do with them? They have to store them somewhere, don't they? And if they have to store them somewhere, they have to have a building to do that. And if they have a building to do that, they have to pay a mortgage on that building, right? When well, they have to build it, and they have to pay a mortgage on it. So what P and G figures out is that it is not cost effective for them based on their resources they have in regards to storage to just make an endless amount of Tide Pods, okay? They have quotas that they have to make because they have only a certain amount of storage. They have only a certain amount of demand for Tide Pods. So they're not going to make as many as they possibly can because they're not going to sell them and they're not going to make a profit. Does that make sense? So this mathematics, eventually, after we learn a little bit more, is the foundation for somebody in P&G's office to decide, okay, we're making 2 million Tide Pods this month. Okay, or in the next month we're going to make 1.8 million. Okay. <laughs> All right, there's a there's a book on that over there, um, in that bookshelf. You see that about eye level all the way to the right called operational research. There's probably a thousand examples of what I just told you in that book. Uh, okay, fake book doesn't exist. All right, so let's do this one here. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to negative 6. I want to graph this one without changing it at all. Okay, I do not want to put this into y equals mx plus b format. Okay, this right now is in standard format, right? As you remember, the video I asked you to watch said standard format is when a and b, or your x's and y's are on the same side, and then your c is on the other side. Okay, and that's what we've got here. Standard form, we don't know right away what the slope is, and I don't know what the y-intercept is. But it does let you find the x and y-intercepts very easily. Okay? If I want to find an x-intercept, that's where we cross the x-axis. And if I cross the x-axis, I know it's going to be an ordered pair where my y value is zero. Okay? Then I want to find my y-intercept. And I'm going to find the y-intercept, that's where I cross the y-axis. And on the y-axis, that's where my x value is zero. So whenever you have an equation that is in standard form like this, you're going to write x-intercept and then set a parentheses or your ordered pair and put a zero in for the y-value. Then do the same thing for your y-intercept and put a zero in for your x-value. 
Okay? And to be honest with you, you don't even need to know that and that. Okay? Basically what you're going to do, if you, you get an equation that's written like that, put two sets of parentheses down, put zero in one spot, zero in the other spot, in, in those two sets of parentheses. Does that make sense? And now all you've got to do is say, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, then this means right here, when I did this one, y was zero. If y is zero, what does this amount right here where my cursor is, what does 2y turn into if y is zero? If that y was zero, what does that turn into? Zero, right? That goes away. Are you left with an equation that's extremely easy to solve? What is x going to be there? Negative 2, right? Then you're going to do the exact same thing, but you're going to substitute in for x being 0. So if x is 0, what is that thing going to turn into? 0. That goes away. Okay? So by choosing these zeros, these x and y to be 0, it just wipes those things away, right? It gives you zero in those spots. So now what is y going to be in that case? What's negative 6 divided by negative 2? 3. Do you have two points you can plot now? Negative 2, 0. And 0, 3. How many points do you need to make a line? Two. And those are the two. Okay, now I've got this line, it's solid because it's a less than or equal to, right? Here's where we have a problem. We cannot use that little person that we drop into the, to the graph to determine whether we shade above or below, okay? Because if we put that little person in, that is only if Y, I talked, talked about yesterday, that's only if Y is solved for and Y is coming first. So we see all these other examples that we've already done. Y is already solved for, it's coming first. Here, Y was already solved for, it's coming first. Okay? Here, you can't do that. Okay? So here, the way that we're going to do it is the algebra way that I was showing you. You choose a point that is nice to choose, which would be 0, 0, right? If you plug 0, 0 in, what's this turn into right here if you plug 0 in for X? goes to zero, right? What do you get if you plug in y to be zero? You use zero. What's zero minus zero? Zero. Is zero less than or equal to negative six? No, right? That's false. Okay, so if you get a false statement, you do not shade where zero, zero came from. You jump across the line, and you shade on the other side. So I'm going to shade over here. Now, I always get the question, do I have to do it that way? Okay, and the answer is no. But all these, just mathematics in general, the, the purpose of mathematics is to generate rules and to learn rules that allow us to minimize our calculations. Okay, um, if you don't want to do it that way, if you can't remember standard form and that, okay, that's going to let me set, solve for x's and y's, or x intercepts and y intercepts. You can take 3x minus 2y, less than or equal to negative 6, and you can put that in a y equals mx plus b form. So you can try to solve for that y. So I'll move 3x to the other side, so it becomes negative 3x minus 6. And it'll divide by negative 2 to everything. And it'll get y. Over here, you'll get, so negative 3 divided by negative 2 is positive 3 over 2. 
Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. Okay. Um, got my x there. Now, the one thing that we've got to pay attention to is when you divide an inequality by a negative number, what do you have to do to this symbol? Flip its direction. So now it becomes y is greater than or equal to. So I can change it into that. Okay. My hope is that you see there's a lot of stuff going on there. Okay. Um, but let's see if that models what we have here in green. Is the y-intercept 3? Is that what we found right there? If my y-intercept is 3 and my slope is 3 over 2, so that means go up 3 to the right 2. Does it get me back on my line? Or could I have gone let down 3, left 2? would have got me that point there, right? Okay. Now, if I have y solved for, did I shade? Now I can use that little person standing on the line. Did I shade above the line or greater than the line? Okay. Those are options, okay? But my thought is if it's in standard form, you've got a better – you're going to be more efficient if you just choose x-intercepts and y-intercepts and solve for um, those and graph it instead of trying to rewrite it in a y equals mx plus b form. A lot of people are, are – are, um, well, they prefer y equals mx plus b because that's the first thing that you guys ever learn when you're graphing lines. But if you kind of try to go against that comfort level and try to learn the other techniques, you'll find out the other techniques have benefits. Um, just fighting comfort zones is, 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 I think, in mathematics hard. Okay, uh, You just got to be willing to try. Jenna, do you have a question? There is a quiz tomorrow.